Hi everyone. Um, here is your Mars Hill Latin 3 lecture for the 1st of February. Okay, so we are on a whole new topic, a whole new set of uh, ideas to learn about than we've been covering. Um, and this is exciting, but it's also a little bit challenging. So this is this next week or two, you really need to buckle down and work really hard or else you're gonna get pretty behind pretty quickly. So just a encouragement to take this next week or two seri really seriously. Okay, so here's the unit for introduction. Um, Latin verbs have three moods, the indicative, imperative, and subjunctive. Remember, indicatives uh, show uh, sort of factual things, things that occur in the real world, actions that occur. Imperatives are orders, as you know, and subjunctives, this is what's new to us this week, uh, subjunctives. <clears throat> the subjunctive has two voices and four tenses, so it's like other verbs in that it has the active and passive voice, but it only has four tenses. The future and the future perfect do not exist in the subjunctive mood, and we'll learn about why that is in the future here. The subjunctive is very common in Latin, but infrequent in English, where it is expressed by words such as let, may, might, should, could, and would. <clears throat> the indicative and subjunctive moods divide verbal activity into two broad categories, so these categories are really important. The indicative uh, shows activity that is actual and takes place in the real world whereas the subjunctive uh, activity is activity that is potential um, or imagined. Potential or imagined. So think actual or real versus potential. Here's an example. So my children go to school. This is a statement of fact, a statement of something actually happening in the real world. On the other hand, I want my children to go to school. In this sentence, I want, that's happening in the real world. The main verb is happening in the real world. But the children going to school, this part is potential. That's pretty potential. Okay. So in that case, we would use the subjunctive in the Latin. Among the verbal ideals, or ideas that are potential and must be expressed by the subjunctive mood in Latin are activities that are wished for, imagined, intended, hypothetical, contrary to fact, and conditional. So these are some of the kinds of action that have to happen in the subjunctive mood in Latin. The subjunctive in Latin is used mainly in subordinate clauses. Um, this isn't surprising when you think about the word subjunctive. So subjunctive, etymologically, comes from the Latin, I'll move it over here, the Latin word subjungere, subjungere. Okay, this is a Latin verb that means to subordinate, to put under. Sub, you see this prefix, means <coughs> under, and jungere is something like to join. So to subordinate comes from the, subjunct the same word that subjunctive comes from. So it's not surprising, again, that uh, subjunctive verbs are mainly used in subordinate clauses. As a reminder, a clause is a part of a sentence that has a subject and a predicate. If the clause can be separated and still remain a complete thought, it's an independent clause. Whereas if it can't stand alone, when separated from the rest of the sentence, it must be a subordinate clause. Finally, in this unit, you will learn to use the subjunctive in one kind of subordinate clause, the purpose clause, and two kinds of independent clause, the hortatory, subjunctive, and deliberative questions. All right, so much for the introduction. Let's look at your lesson. All right, so the key to learning the present subjunctive, which is what we're gonna do this week, is just the present, 
is to recognize uh, the very minor change that happens from the present indicative. The present subjunctive is exactly like the present uh, indicative, except that the stem vowel of each conjugation changes. So you notice this is amem, ames, amet, amemus, ametis, amet. Normally, in the indicative, the conjugation vowel for the first conjugation is a, but here we see that it changes to e. All right. In the second conjugation, our normal vowel is e. Here we have e a instead. The third conjugation uh, is e or i, and in the subjunctive it changes to a. And third i o, and fourth we have i a, where we would normally just have i. We see this in a little chart down here. The first conjugation substitutes E for A. The second adds the A. The third substitutes A for the vowels. And the third IO adds an A and fourth adds an A. So that's a chart explaining that. And then we have a little memory device. We beat a liar. So you see here the first conjugation has the E, second EA third A and fourth I A. All right, so the key here in uh, conjugating sub present subjunctives is that you need to know which conjugation to which conjugation your verb belongs. As long as you know that, for example, dokeo belongs to the second conjugation, you can remember that, oh, this is just going to be exactly like the present except we want E A but you do have to know which conjugation you're dealing with, with a verb, so that you know which vowel to substitute. In terms of uh, the meaning in the subjunctive, it's heavily dependent on the context, which you see in a note on page 67 here. The meaning is determined by the context, but for recitation we will memorize may. So you memorize may, but we'll learn many different translations for a subjunctive verb. Uh, again, the the subjunctive is very common in English, but in, sorry, in Latin, but very infrequent in English. And when we do see it in English, it comes with one of these helping verbs here. The subjunctive mood does have active and passive, just like all other verbs, but it only has uh, the four tenses, present, imperfect, view, sorry, perfect, and pluperfect. It doesn't have the future and future perfect, and ignore this if this uh, doesn't make any sense to you. Um, it doesn't have those tenses because futures, much like subjunctives, are somewhat hypothetical or uh, potential rather than actual. Notice if I say, I will go to the store, um, that's a future, but that is not a completely certain fact about the real world because it hasn't happened yet. It may be that I uh, get sick and I can't go to the store or I decide tomorrow that I don't want to go to the store or I'm too lazy to go to the store. So in a sense, futures are already potential rather than actual. Similarly, subjunctives are about potential action. I may go to the store. So... In a sense, it would be, um, it wouldn't make, it would sort of double up and not make much sense to have a future subjunctive since they're already sort of in the same arena of potentiality. All right, um, now looking back at page 67, uh, at the third bullet point, the subject, the subjunctive is used primarily in subordinate clauses. One use of the present subjunctive in independent clauses is the hortatory subjunctive, which comes from the Latin hortor, to encourage. So the hortatory subjunctive, and that does have to do with encouraging. The hortatory subjunctive expresses an exhortation, uh, an indirect command, or a strong wish, usually translated by let for an exhortation in the first person, may for a second person, and let or may for an indirect command or strong wish in the third person. 
use these models to translate the hortatory subjunctive. So for a first person, oremus, let us pray. Uh, vincas, may you overcome. And veniat, let him come. Or may he come for a strong wish. Just a note here. Um, exhortation is a little bit stronger in sense than encourage in English. This is sort of a side comment. When you encourage someone, uh, you might say, oh, you're doing a good job, or oh, you can do it, um, something a little bit weaker. An exhortation is going to be stronger, and it actually can sometimes not be totally positive. Uh, so a lot of times, for example, Paul will exhort the Corinthians to change their way of behaving or thinking and it's not altogether a positive thing. It's very, um, it, it might be severe encouragement. Uh, so just a um, note there about the meaning of exhortation. It's a little bit, it's quite a bit stronger and not totally positive like encourage. All right. Now, the English word let and may have many meanings in English, not all of which correspond to the hortatory subjunctive. For instance, may can mean ask permission, and let can mean allow. So that note is just telling you um, that the let and may that indicate the subjunctive uh, also can mean other things, like may I have cake, or uh, let me go, for example. Those are different example, different um, uses of let and may than the subjunctive. Okay, finally you have some vocab. You have auxilium. Um, do do you pronounce this this diphthong here? A U is ow. Sometimes people forget that because we don't see it all that much. Then we have concilium and conchilium. Uh, here that's kind of tricky because we have two very similar words. You see the S and the C are the only differences. The nice thing about this is that it lines up with English, council and council. So if you have the meanings straight in English, you won't have too much trouble with the Latin words. Um, just as a note, if you don't have the difference in English, if you don't understand that difference, um, counsel, advice plan. So counsel is something that you get from someone. Um something that they have advised you to do. It's the thing they advise. On the other hand, counsel is uh, the group of people that gives you counsel. So the, the, the group counsel refers to a group of people, and counsel refers to the content of um, something that they would advise you to do. All right, then we have on Evangelium, uh, imperium, odium, ovum, egg, periculum, perin principium, and vinculum. Um, and there's not too much else about that that I'm going to say. All right, so that's your lesson this week. Again, one more reminder, this is a really key lesson with introducing the subjunctive. So do study the lesson well and study the introduction to the lesson that we went over well. Also, please remember, um, we do have a snow day, so please remember to upload your, uh, your assignments to Google Classroom. I already have up two uh, links where you can upload your work. So you have your Unit 3 review worksheets and your Unit 3 uh, exam. And you need to upload both of those by tomorrow night, or it won't be accepted. I actually am looking now and seeing that three people already have theirs submitted, so good for you all. All right, happy snow day. God bless you, and I hope to see you soon.